Okay, so um, here we can go probably relatively quickly through this section. Um, what I've done here is I've, um, again, this is not intended to be a, a perfect, complete list, um, but what are the uh, objectives of procurement? Um, uh, reading from the top, you know, cost reduction, compliance, reliability, and so on. And these would be strategic objectives of the procurement function. Um, and the balance obviously depends on the particular business. And there are, we could surely spend some time um, adding to that list. And uh, here is um, a list of challenges from a relatively, it was earlier this year, in fact, um, event. And uh, globalization was challenges. These are the things that challenge the, uh, the, the not the competence, but the, the environment is changing. So obviously we have to think about how we're going to handle it. And um, the point that I wanted to highlight here is that um, here I've got, at the bottom, I've got one of those highlighted in red, um, impact of mobile technology. So, I mean, that's basically the space they're talking in this afternoon. All of these ideas are there, but they're not very workable if you have to sit down at a computer and, you know, spend five minutes opening it up and you can only do it when you're in the factory and so forth. So the impact and the blue um, lines there, what I've done is to highlight the ones that are particularly impacted um, by the mobile technology. So the global co globalization of, of contracts, um, if somebody is interacting with a, uh, a provider somewhere and uh, the system is set up, then relatively easily they can interact and ask the minor, the fine-tuning questions and so forth, and, which is impossible if it's got to be done on the basis, the, the, you know, the very old-fashioned basis, you send a letter and you wait weeks. Um, these days things happen in seconds. And... Um, and a challenge that, that came out of this particular event was the need for flexibility among internal and external stakeholders. And they actually used the word workflow capabilities. So that's about what we're talking about. That um, workflows are very flexible in the sense that uh, if you adjust the graphics, then everything else automatically happens. You don't even need to train people. They just, uh, you know, they, they read the step when it, when it turns up. And, of course, another thing is reducing um, pencil and paper processes. And uh, clearly that's been going for years with various forms of, of standardized uh, communication. Um, uh, we find that by having these processes uh, it helps enormously. In particular, if you have a step and somebody isn't sure about what they need to do, uh, very often the tools have a little chat window just for that process so you can have a little discussion around that process in the old days it would be um, hidden away in 150 emails and you have to take each email out of context and say aha i know what it was talking about but if you have a chat window about each task then then it makes it much easier to interact with the people that are that are dealing with it um so here we have um challenges of traditional process implementation, it's difficult to make sure that people do it. If you have your processes on paper, you can tell them what to do, you can threaten them, you can control them, you can audit them, but you don't actually know what they're really doing. Um, it could be that people have these workarounds, as Bill said, that the, the processes may not be uh, implemented consistently. And when a process is running, you really don't know where things are. It's like um, you know, the courier, before we had these tracking systems, you sent your stuff. I remember one time about 10 years ago, uh, I was working uh, in Brussels and we, we were updating a computer system in Hungary. And um, we, we actually didn't know where the stuff was because in those days they hadn't got round to building in tracking. And then it's, I say it's laborious. It, it, it's very, very difficult to collect statistical data. You know, how long was our waiting time and how many people are involved and, and how many processes don't happen on time and all that sort of stuff. Um, you can't do that on paper. It just can't be done. But it's a spin-off of doing it through workflows that those statistics are generated by the systems. So BPM actually addresses these issues as well. 